All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed your break um, and hopefully your neck is not sore because we're gonna be talking about muscles of the neck. So the neck, um, when we're doing either massage or certain treatments, every state, and this is another issue with state laws have their own limit. Um, so to sometimes get around that, what we do is we call it um, a, a, not a chest facial or a back facial or a treatment and it can involve massage. So the muscles of the neck include your platymus muscle, which is a broad muscle extending from the chest, shoulders, to the sides of the chin. It's responsible for lowering the jaw and the lip. Um, sternocheloidus mastidius is the muscle of the neck that lowers and rotates the head. You have muscles of your eyebrow. Um, this is also important to know because if sometimes, this happened to me once in the salon, here's a funny story. One of the regulars who she comes in, she would have different styles work on her. She would do a roller set. She'd want like an auburn hair color. Well, she came in the one time and I knew something was up because I was kept looking at her. I'm like, what on earth? And then she brought it up that one of her eyebrows was actually a lot larger. So it was kind of like this. She had gone to the plastic surgeon and the doctor was a newer doctor and he had offered to give her free Botox. This is a life lesson in making health decisions that you have to consider. If you're going to the plastic surgeon or going to some kind of doctor and they say, oh, I just got certified in Botox, chances are you should not take them up on the offer because what happened was he did it wrong and it was improper and one side of her face lifted up while the other part sagged. It's also important to know a lot of these muscles because if you're doing hair in a more wealthier area such as um, New York City, Los Angeles, um, or certain counties that are a little bit more wealthy, a lot of uh, people, men and women, will get plastic surgery done, such as facelifts, nose jobs, and you can do some serious damage if you don't massage right, or um, if they come in and you can kind of realize that something is wrong, if the facelift is botched and they look like they're surprised, or what services you're allowed to legally give them. So just keep those in mind and know that um, how these muscles function. Practice doing it in the mirror. Look up animations on YouTube. Know that your mouth has all kinds of muscles. Mouth muscles are not exactly important for massage services because we're not going to massage the lips or the mouth. Um, some of the muscles like the trapezius, the pectoralis major, they sound familiar when we're doing workouts. Know that there's different types, there are different ways that muscles move. Extensors are muscles that straighten up like the wrist, hands and fingers and for, form a straight line. Supinator, think of like supal, muscles that move like that. Flexor are extensor muscles of the wrist involved in flexing the wrist. Protonator are muscles that turn the hand inwards, the palm faces downward. So pronator, opposite is supinator. E extenders, flexors, they're like opposites. Abductors are muscles that draw a body part, draw a body part such as a finger, arm, or toe away from the midline of the body or externity. Adductors are muscles that draw a body part such as a finger, arm, or toe inward toward the median axis of the body or an extremity. In the hand, abductors draw the fingers together. We know that muscles of the lower leg and foot are important for massage services and pedicures. Um, Let's see, you'll see the abbreviation, minimi, which usually means small, and maximus, which means big. Now we're gonna go on to the um, nervous system. Your nervous system is exceptionally well organized. It's composed of the brain, smile, corn, and nerves. It is responsible for controlling and coordinating all the systems of the body. It makes them work harmoniously and efficiently. Every square inch of the human body is supplied with fine fibers known as nerves. There are over 100 billion nerve cells known as neurons in the body. The scientific study, structure and function and pathology of the nervous system is known as neurology. Knowing how the nervous system works will help you perform services in a more proficient manner, administering shampoos and massage techniques. It will also help you understand the effects of these treatments that have on the body as a whole. We'll also know that certain services that are advanced services like chemical peels, um, our body responds to pain and that's why we can't just take the strongest percentage of chemical peel and slap it on someone's face because we're going to either burn the heck out of their face or make them scream so loud that our clients will think that we're running a torture chamber and not a salon. When you study psychology like I did too, you'll know that I love neurology and the nervous system. That's always an option for doing graduate study, neuropsychology. That's a career that could be an option down the road. Know that your nervous system is divided. You have the CNS, your central nervous system, which is your brain, your spinal cord, spinal nerves, and cranial nerves. 
It controls consciousness, such as voluntary function and the five senses. If we have an injury, a brain injury or nervous system injury, that will affect our senses. So know that structure and function are related. Sometimes by studying the disorders, you actually know how the body system works. The PNS, the prehipreal nervous system, is a system of nerves that connects the prehipreal outer parts of the body to the central nervous system. It has both sensory and motor nerves. It functions to carry impulses or messages from the central nervous system. Know that your autonomic nervous system, ANS, is the part of the nervous system that controls involuntary muscles. It regulates the action of smooth muscles, glands, blood vessels, heart, and breathing. So we have consciousness of our CNS, but we don't have consciousness of our ANS. That's how you kind of remember that. We can't control our heart. Your brain is the part of the central nervous system contained in the cranium. It is the largest and most complex nerve tissue, and it controls sensation, muscles, activity of glands, and power to think and sense and feel. On average, the brain weighs a little less than three pounds. Three pounds, but it's very powerful. It receives messages through 12 pairs of cranial nerves that originate in the brain and various parts of the head, face, and neck. The spinal cord is the portion of the central nervous system that originates in the brain and extends down to the lower extremity of the trunk. It is protected by the spinal column. You have 31 pairs of spinal nerves extending from the spinal cord and distributed throughout the muscles, skin of the trunk, and limbs. So know that if you have a spinal injury, that's why some spinal injuries can produce odd effects such as um, slurred speech or um, lack of movement, lack of feeling. Nerve damage is very serious because they don't grow like other cells grow. Know that um, each system has the basic function of life. Like in bones, it's the um, bone cell. In the nerves, in the, I mean not the nerves, in the nervous system, it's the nerve cell or the neuron. The neuron, also known as a nerve cell, is a primary structure. It has the cell body, your nucleus, your dendrites, and the axon. Your dendrites are little branches of fibers that carry impulses toward the cell and receive impulses from other neurons. Our axon and axon terminal consists of a neuron through which impulses are sent. Sometimes you may see a little ring around the axon that's the myelinated sheath that makes the impulses go faster. And your axon terminal, which is an extension of the neuron through which impulses are sent away from the cell to other neurons, glands, or muscles. Your nerves are cords made up of bundles of nerve files, he fibers held together by connective tissue through which impulses are transmitted. Nerve nerves have their origins in the brain and spinal cord and send their branches to all their parts of the body. Know that there's two types of nerves. Sensory nerves, also known as afferent nerves, carry impulse or messages from the same organs to the brain, from the sense organs to the brain where sensations such as touch, cold, heat, and sight, and hearing, taste, smell, or pain, and pressure are experienced. Sensory nerve endings called receptors are located close to the surface of the skin. Impulses pass from the sensory nerves to the brain and back through motor nerves to the muscles. The muscles move as a result of this completed circuit. Then you have motor nerves, also known as efferent nerves. They carry impulses from the brain to the muscles or gland. These transmitted impulses produce movement. A reflex is an automatic reaction to a stimulus that involves a movement of an impulse from a sensory receptor along the sensory nerve and spinal cord. So sometimes reflexes, we do a reflex test of the doctor, we can assess um, brain injury or see if something is wrong there. And know that there are different nerves of the face and the neck. Our largest of the cranial nerves is the fifth cranial nerve, cranial nerves, also known as the trifaxial nerve or tregimential nerve. It is the chief sensory nerve of the face and serves as the motor nerve of the muscles that control chewing. It has three branches. Your opithalic nerve, mandibular nerve, maxillary nerve. And check all these different... Um, I thought, oh my gosh, I thought I was reading something else, but make sure you read this little table on nerves. There's a whole bunch of what they affect. Um, I, I gotta figure out what those three branches are now. I'm thinking what it branches, the branches of neurons. I totally had a goof right there. So um, right here, you need to know the seventh cranial nerve, also known as the facial nerve, is the chief motor nerve of the face. Its divisions and their branches supply and control all of the muscles of the facial expression. It emerges near the lower part of the ear and extends to the muscles of the neck. So read all these little nerves and read the did you know 
that if you did not have a central nervous system, you could not think, taste, smell, see, hear, think, breathe, move, run, sleep, remember, sing, laugh, write, just to name a few things. So don't ever take for granted a healthy body because some people are born without this and they actually um, can't experience life to their fullest. So that's what's so interesting about our body is that we don't always um, appreciate it. So know that your 11th cranial nerve is also known as the accessory nerve. Um, read the nerve charts of the lower leg and foot. Know that your circulatory system is your cardiovascular system. It controls the body circulation of blood through vessels. Your heart is a muscle. It's a cone-shaped organ that keeps the blood moving within the circulatory system. It's often referred to as the body's pump. Um, knowing the circulatory system is very important when doing advanced treatments for skin care because if a client has um, a pacemaker, you can't use an electrical machine because that will go and they essentially die. So it's very important to know all that. Know that the atrium is upper thin wall and the ventricle is a lower thick wall of the chamber. Know that valves are structures that temporarily close a passage or permit blood flow in one direction. You have pulmonary circulation, which sends blood from the heart to the lungs to be purified and then back to the heart again. And then systemic circulation, which is known as general circulation. It carries the blood from the heart throughout the body and back to the heart. So read the um, brief explanation of how the circulatory system works. I know it's a lot of reading and uh, I myself am more visual learner, so make sure you watch YouTube videos about how this process functions. Know that there are blood vessels, which are tubes. There's arteries, which are thick walls, muscular flexible tubes that carry oxygen and blood away from the heart to the um, arteoles. The largest artery in the body is the aorta. Know that um, arteoles are small arteries that deliver blood to capillaries. Capillaries are tiny, thin walled blood cell vessels that connect smaller arteries to venules. Capillaries bring nutrients to the cells and carry away waste materials. Know that venules are small vessels that connect to the capillaries to the veins. They collect blood from the capillaries and drain it into the veins. Know that veins are thin walled blood vessels that are less elastic than arteries and that veins contain cup like valves that keep the blood flowing in one direction to the heart and prevent blood from flowing backward. Veins carry blood containing waste products back to the heart and lungs for cleaning and to pick up oxygen. Veins are located closer to the outer skin and surface of the body and arteries. Know that blood is a nutritious fluid circulating throughout the circulatory system. Right here, there are approximately 8 to 10 pints of blood in the human body which contributes to 1 20th of the body's weight. Blood is approximately 80% water. It is a sticky and salty with a normal temperature of 98.6 degrees. It is bright red in the arteries except for the pulmonary arteries and dark red in the veins. The color changes occur with the exchange of carbon dioxide for oxygen. The blood passes through the lungs and again with the exchange of oxygen for carbon dioxide and circulates through the body. So know that what that's saying is that we have oxygenated blood, our oxygenated blood will be brighter, there's more hemoglobin in it. Our deoxygenated blood, which has more carbon dioxide and waste products, is going to be less bright and less vibrant. We use iron in our blood, and when exposed to air, the iron oxidizes to red. Certain animals, like crabs, they have um, copper-based blood, which makes their blood turn blue. Fun little fact there. Blood is composed of red and white blood cells, platelets, plasma, and hemoglobin. Our red blood cells carry oxygen from the lungs to the body cells and transport carbon dioxide from the cells to the lungs. Red blood cells contain hemoglobin, a complex iron protein that binds to oxygen. That's what gives blood its color. Our white blood cells, also known as white corpuscles or leukocytes, perform the function of destroying disease-carrying toxins and bacteria. Our platelets will help our blood clot. Our plasma is a fluid part of the blood in which red and white blood cells and platelets flow. Plasma is 90% water and contains protein and sugars. The main function of plasma is to carry food and deliver nutrients and to take carbon dioxide away from cells. Know that an adult heart beats about 30 million times a year and pumps nearly 4,000 gallons of blood every day. Know that adults have over 60,000 miles of blood vessels in their bodies. If you tie all your vessels together, they will go around the earth about twice. No, about two and one and a half times. 
So blood has different functions to transport nutrients, carry water and oxygen, carry away carbon dioxide, help maintain homeostasis by equalizing temperature, maintaining pH, work with the immune system to protect us, and it seals leaks and injured blood vessels by forming clots and preventing blood loss. Know that clots are not always a good thing. If we have a clot in our artery, that can cause a heart attack. We have all kinds of arteries in our face. There's the Carmen carotoid artery. Um, read all their functions. We have um, one important vein, the internal jugular vein, is located at the side of the neck to collect blood from the brain and parts of the neck. An external jugular vein located on the side of the neck that carries blood returning from the heart, face, and neck. That's why if you ever have an artery, uh, not an artery injury, um, a jugular injury, it's very serious. Um, I remember when I was doing training uh, for working in the school system, um, we had to learn about EpiPen, and the nurse goes, oh, um, where, where do you uh, put an EpiPen? And I go, oh, oh, I know, it's in your jugular. Um, long story short, I watched a film, um, Pulp Fiction, and I thought that you had to take an EpiPen and go like that. Long story short, the nurse was like, oh, no, 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 um, because that would have been lethal. Um, EpiPen is actually in the inner thigh. That's why it's important to know anatomy. <laughs> So read all the different types of arteries and how the blood is supplied. Um, know that your lymphatic system is, actually you know what I'm gonna do, I know it's gonna be a little early, I'm gonna cut this off here and then I'm gonna cover um, the lymphatic system, the endocrine system, the digestive system, excretory, um, integumentary, and the reproductive system and we're gonna end our anatomy there. I wanna give you guys a little bit of a break because I know that was a lot to take in. I do want to comment um, on knowing cardiovascular health. Heart disease is one of the biggest killers out there that is not talked about as enough as it should be. Certain behaviors as stylists, um, that, such as improper teeth brushing, uh, basic hygiene practices, poor diet, smoking, those all can increase our risk of cardiovascular disease. And know that as hairdressers, when we're not healthy, we cannot perform healthy. And that can also affect our clientele. So for example, if a stylist is not eating healthy and they have a heart issue, they have to then take a medical leave from the salon. What happens to the clients in the salon? They either go elsewhere or they get picked up by other stylists. And that's why it's very important to keep yourself healthy so you can maintain a long-lasting career and good client relationships. So I'm gonna be right back.